uh, I, as uh, a soul, am an immaterial personal substance. And my soul is equipped with a set of rational faculties that are sufficient for personhood. In God's case, God is a soul who is so richly equipped in rational faculties that he has three sets of rational faculties, each of which is sufficient for personhood, and therefore he is a tripersonal intellectual substance. Okay, well, did I but did I get your view right, Dr. Craig, that uh, the Trinity slash God is not a person, and each of the that is a self, and uh, right, and it, each it, of the three is personal. So it's not a single person. God is not a single person. I'm not a Unitarian. So first, Dr. Craig, time and again in this discussion, says that the Trinity God is one soul, and he also uses singular personal pronouns for that Trinity God. Let's see how the Bible defines the word translated as soul. In Genesis 2-7, it says that when the Lord God formed the man, Adam, from the dust of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man, Adam, became a living being. The phrase translated a living being by the NIV translation is rendering the Hebrew word nephesh, which means a single soul, in this case, a human person, an individual. Similarly, in the New Testament, in Acts 2 verse 41, we read that there were added to the Christian faith at Pentecost around 3,000 souls or persons. The Greek word translated as souls by the ESV is where we get the English word psyche. That is your soul, your identity, your own individuality. So it's no surprise to find that God identifies himself and is identified by the biblical writers as a single nephesh, a single psyche, that is soul, non-human person. 1 Samuel 2.35, God says, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my soul. And once again, behind the English translation soul is the Hebrew nephesh for a person, an individual. And in the New Testament, Matthew 12, 18, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. And once again, behind the English word soul is the Greek word for psyche. Again, an individual, a single person. But in the case of God, a non-human person, obviously. So Dr. Craig repeatedly identifies his Trinity God that is three persons in the one God with singular personal pronouns. So in English, we have I, me, him, he, his, etc. But for the Trinitarian, like Dr. Craig, all three persons of their one God can at the same time be identified with singular personal pronouns. But as a Christian philosopher, world renowned, Nonetheless, Dr. Craig should know that that is a flat-out, undeniable, logical contradiction. You cannot have, for example, 3x equals 1x. So in Isaiah 44, 24, God says, I, the Lord, that is the divine name Yahweh or Jehovah, I am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself and spreading out the earth all alone. So are we to believe that the singular pronoun I and the word myself applies to all three persons at the same time, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? That is nonsensical, paradoxical. You cannot have three I's equals one I any more than three X equals one X. But there are what I call honest Trinitarian scholars out there. For example, Dr. Millard Erickson in his book, Guiding Three Persons, admits that it may be necessary in order to convey the unusual meaning involved in this doctrine to utilize what analytical philosophers would term logically odd language. This means using language in such a way as intentionally to commit grammatical errors. Thus, I have sometimes said of the Trinity, he are three or they is one. 
Another one is the so-called Bible answer man, Hank Hanegraaff, who famously describes the Trinity as three who's in one what. In other words, the one God of the Bible should really be described as a thing or an it, or as their credo council state, one usia, one substance. But obviously the Bible always describes, as I have shown, the one God of Israel, Yahweh, the father of our Lord Jesus, as one single individual, a non-human person with singular personal pronouns. The late noted Dr. Carl Henry said that some critics consider orthodox representations of the Trinity a mathematical monstrosity. The doctrine they contend is as fallacious in its claim for the three-in-one God as the formula 3x equals 1x. But this description patently distorts the doctrine. Christian theology affirms neither that three gods are one God, nor that three isolated persons are one God. Rather, it affirms three eternal personal distinctions in the one God, in short, three X in one Y. Such a formulation is both intelligible and non-contradictory. Well, I wish the good Dr. Henry were still alive today so he would correct his fellow Trinitarian scholars who are publicly stating fallacious, unintelligible, and clearly contradictory statements about the one God they say they believe in. But that's because, as Dr. Erickson himself admits in the book, God in Three Persons, Christians do not know what the doctrine says. Well, it appears that neither their noted teachers. The fact is that believers in God as a single person, that is, God the Father, were at the beginning of the third century still forming the large majority. That's according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, 11th edition. And that's because the New Testament offers no new doctrine of God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob is now the God and Father of Jesus Christ. Thus, all Old Testament theology is implied in the New Testament, according to the Oxford Companion to the Bible. The little-known English educator and Unitarian minister, Land Carpenter, said that if God is tripersonal, it cannot be said to be a person. By that he meant, obviously, a non-human person. You introduce nothing but confusion, for God is always described by the sacred writers as a person. When you speak of God being an intelligent agent, and at the same time deny him to be a person, you talk in a language not possible to be understood. Again, whether the terms essence, substance have the same signification, that is the same meaning, or whether they mean different things, I think of little importance and not worth a particular discussion. It is high time that all such metaphysical terms should be banished from Christian professions and Christian debates.